Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss reading comprehension. I had already discussed this RC in my paid batch. However, I thought of making this RC available to others as well. Without wasting any more time now, let's directly start with the RC. So what does the direction say? It says uh, read the given passage carefully and answer the questions that follow. Okay. Since the beginning of recorded time, people have been thinking about the end of the world. As such, the planet's major religions have formulated elaborate viewpoints on this topic. In Christianity, the Bible's book of Revelation details Armageddon, the final battle on earth between the forces of good and Satan. Hinduism offers a version in which Vishnu returns to battle evil as a figure on a white horse. The doomsday beliefs of some ancient religions can still be felt in modern secular society. As was the case with the conclusion of the Mayan calendar cycle that predicted the end of the world in 2012. The most mind-boggling controversy in the contemporary philosophy of science is the doomsday argument, a claim that a mathematical formula can predict how long the human race will survive. It gives us even odds that our species will meet its end within the next 760 years. So what is the meaning of mind boggling? Mind boggling actually means overwhelming. You can note it down. Mind boggling means overwhelming. Now, uh, well, taking into consideration the monstrosity of human actions. So what is the meaning of monstrosity? It means uh, vastness. I mean, huge. Anything that is huge. Right? It, comes to, uh, it comes from the word monster. Fine. Monster, monstrous, monstrosity. Fine. Anything that is huge. Hmm. Uh, the monstrosity of human actions against nature, it would be Panglossian idea to say that we humans are not in any way responsible for the doomsday. So, here again, what is Panglossian? Panglossian idea, it means unreasonably optimistic. Fine. Or being naive. Okay. You can note it down also. Now, uh, due to our actions, we are facing the consequences. The recent outbreak of the novel coronavirus, better known as COVID-19, has caused a pandemonium on a global scale. Now again, what is the meaning of pandemonium? Do you know? If not, do write it down. Noisy confusion or disorder? Pandemonium means disorder or noisy confusion. The mere virus seems to be a Brobdingian uh, trying its best to engulf the human race bit by bit with its first victims from China. So what is the meaning of Brobdingian? It means huge. Fine. Researchers claim that the virus had started spreading due to the strange food habits of people in China who are too cruel to spare any animal. Starting from insects to bats, they eat almost everything. If you scroll through the pages of history, we can understand that this is not the first time the human race is facing a deadly outbreak. By far the deadliest plague that ever existed happened in 1346, the Black Plague. It killed as many as 200 million people, originated in China too, and killed 60% of Europe's population. Since then, we had numerous mass diseases that killed many people like the Asian flu, smallpox, typhus, or cholera. Let me cite another instance of disaster, which we have caused very recently due to our stupid actions. We all have witnessed the Amazon fires very recently. The year 2019 saw the worst fires to hit the Amazon basin for over a decade. Scientists think that the fires burning across Brazil right now are primarily caused when people set fire to trees they cut down earlier in the year. The Amazon rainforest is the world's largest tropical forest. It's home to 30 million people and hosts the largest concentration of biodiversity on the planet. It's quenched by the largest river in the world. 
it upholds a board of 140 billion metric tons of carbon and recently we lost a major part of it. Experts say that it all started when the people, uh, sorry, started with people relentlessly burning trees and farmers burning trees and vegetation as part of their farming process. Flash and burn. Will we ever learn? Name any disastrous action against Mother Nature. We are always the prime suspects. Rather, we are the only suspects. Experts warn there may be no unspoiled places left on the planet within a century. Humans have destroyed a tenth of Earth's remaining wilderness in the last 25 years, and there may be none left within a century if the trends continue, according to an authoritative new study. So what does it say? There may be none left within a century if trends continue according to an authoritative new study. Yeah. Fine. Unique ecosystems are being lost and there is no turning back. Well, at this very juncture, it needs to be said that if we can really do some good for ourselves, for our future generations, we really need to draw the line. We can act before it is too late to mend, before it is too late to stop Mother Nature from punishing us, before it is too late to hasten the process wherein we will experience doomsday approaching us with green on its countenance. Now let us directly move to the questions. So, what can be the main idea of the given passage? See. Uh, in case of main idea, we will uh, get various questions like this of this type main idea theme of the passage tone of the author in the passage fine so what is the difference between uh, main idea and essence uh, the prime difference between main idea and essence is that in case of essence uh, suppose uh, a passage consists of three paragraphs okay let us say four paragraphs in case of essence you have to take uh, points from each of the four paragraphs and frame your answer as the essence that is it will consist of points taken from all the four paragraphs but in case of main idea which you can say the condensed form of essence the main idea will consist of um, the gist that is uh, it will be much shorter than the essence and it will be much condensed much concise fine so that is the basic difference between main idea and essence did you get my point so what is the main idea of the given passage? doomsday prophecy is true and is around the corner option b human beings will never learn from the disasters in recent times option c the covid 19 is a serious issue at present option d Humans can check their atrocities towards nature to lessen the negative impacts on future generations. And option E, both A and B. Okay, let us check. The main idea, right? Doomsday prophecy is true and is around the corner. Is it? Can this be the main idea of the given passage? No. See, doomsday is obviously mentioned, but it is not the main idea. Is it? Uh, many things are already mentioned. Like uh, we can um, check our actions, we can draw the line. Every time the author uh, says that human beings can be better, they can uh, better themselves, they can check their actions, they can be better, they have caused so much damage to mother nature. Fine. So uh, doomsday prophecy, that is not the main idea. Human beings will never learn from the disasters in recent times, no, that is too vague. That is too vague to be the main idea. The COVID-19 is a serious issue at present? No. That is a, a small instance of a bigger picture. It is just an uh, instance. The COVID-19, the Amazon fires, these are all instances, examples. Humans can check their atrocities towards nature to lessen the negative impacts on future generations. So yes, uh, we are left with option D only. Right. And obviously, it is our correct answer choice because 
See, throughout the passage, the author clearly mentions various instances wherein human atrocities have resulted in various destructive outcomes. Uh, it has uh, already caused death and damage to human life and property. And uh, we have also seen, just a second, yeah, uh, we have also seen that in the concluding paragraph, the author clearly points out that human beings can uh, check their wrong actions towards mother nature to protect themselves from the negative impacts. So it is clearly mentioned we can do good for ourselves, do some good for ourselves for our future generations. It is already mentioned, right? So um, option D is the most suitable answer choice for uh, question number one. Fine. This is the main idea. Now, question number two. What it says? Uh, what can be the suitable title for the given passage? Yes. For um, for having a suitable title, you have uh, to understand both the main idea and essence. What does the author actually uh, mean to convey? What does the author actually uh, um, mean when he uh, writes the passage, when he pens down the passage? What does he uh, want to convey to us, to the readers? So, we have to just uh, sum it up, summarize everything in just a very few words. And uh, suggest a suitable title for the passage. See, the Doomsday Prophecy and its effects. No. Doomsday Prophecy is, I mean, quite vague, isn't it? Option A only deals with Doomsday pro Prophecy in particular. Right. And uh, next one, Extinction of Human Race. No. It is too vague to be a title. Again, it is really too vague. Option C. Our actions and their uh, results, it is never too late to mend. Yes, according to me, this can be our correct answer choice. It is quite suitable. Fine. Still, let's check the other ones. Mass extinction of human race is on the cards. No. See, option D is uh, not, again, it is not uh, very clear. Fine. It does not uh, include the essence of the passage. Right. And uh, option E, the Amazon fire has been on mankind. No. See, in the passage, as I said, just a second. Yeah, in the passage, as I already said, see, Amazon fire, black plague, fine, COVID-19, all these are just examples, mere examples. So, we cannot just uh, cling to that particular example and make it... A suitable title right so the best choice is our actions and their results it is never too late to mend see it was already mentioned in the concluding paragraph we can act before uh, it is too late to mend generally in such type of passages uh, which we get in uh, uh, mains like SBPU mains IBSPU mains generally what happens what we uh, what you will see is that uh, you will um, get to know the title either from the sometimes you will get either from the um, beginning lines fine from the um, introductory paragraph or the introductory lines or uh, it may be you know, within uh, I mean it may be hidden also you have to understand the hidden meaning of the passage or a paragraph and you have to find out the title or it can be at the last also in the concluding lines you must always check the concluding lines never never ever ignore the concluding paragraph and the concluding lines fine uh, the main essence or title can be always hidden in the concluding lines fine so our actions and their results it is never too late to mend this is the correct answer choice. That is option C. Now let us move to the next question. In the concluding lines, what figure of speech is used by the author to describe doomsday? Yes, I was going to explain this. Still waited for the question to arrive. See, here it is mentioned. Mother nature, uh, before it is too late to stop, mother nature from punishing us before it is too late to hasten the process wherein we will experience doomsday approaching us with the green on its countenance. Okay, before explaining what figure of speech it is, let me just go through the options and explain each one to you. Fine. Option A. 
oxymoron what is an oxymoron see oxymoron is a figure of speech it is a rhetoric device generally in case of oxymoron we use two contradictory words together like cruel kindness right it is a uh, simple example of oxymoron right you can note it down like uh, it is a rhetoric device and it uses two contradictory words it is used to identify an oxymoron now option b onomatopoeia what is onomatopoeia it is the process of creating words that practically suggest the sound it describes like uh, suppose we are uh, describing an animal the sound of an animal like in case of lions we describe the sound as roar roar of a lion and in case of cats it is meow of a cat so that is onomatopoeia then right? option c synecdoche so what exactly is synecdoche it uh, actually means small parts uh, the small parts refer to the whole entity right? the small part of something of an individual or something refers to the whole entity it, it represents the whole entity like uh, the captain says the captain of a ship says all hands to the deck means he is calling all the crew members for help right? but uh, in this case all hands hands are actually part of the body of the crew members fine but all hands refers to uh, synecdoche it is a form of synecdoche all hands here refer to the individual crew members he is calling the individual crew members to help fine now option d personification yes you must be acquainted with uh, this word personification so what exactly is personification see personification means when you are trying to uh, give when you are trying to impart uh, life right you are imbibing life in a non living entity then it is personification the non living thing or entity will try to behave as a living uh, organism living thing like uh, you can say the dark clouds in the sky the dark clouds in the winter sky were staring at us with a, uh, with a green on their face so in this case can clouds actually smile no right clouds are not human beings they are not animals clouds cannot smile but we are trying to personify clouds right we are giving life we are imbibing life into the non living entities in this case that is the clouds fine the clouds are uh, greening that is uh, here also green the word green is mentioned see doomsday approaching us with a green green means smile in a wicked manner or a crooked manner fine so that is personification and what exactly is metaphor 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 uh, generally uses hidden comparisons the comparison can be unrelated right uh, like i can say that vipul is the black sheep of the family but in this case vipul is neither a sheep nor is he black fine he is not black and he is not a sheep but we are just comparing him right he is a black sheep of the family did you get my point so here in this case the doomsday so what is doomsday do you know the meaning of doomsday if you don't know you can write it down as well uh, doomsday means the Mm, last day of mankind fine the final day of judgment what we see in the movies you must have seen doomsday prophecies uh, many uh, people have made doomsday prophecies right that uh, they have made a prophecy that human kind will come to an end on that day that is doomsday fine doomsday is an is a non living entity can it smile i mean can it have a crooked smile on its face can it approach us with a crooked smile on its face countenance means face fine no so doomsday is given life fine he is being personified so our correct answer choice will be option d that is personification did you get my point now option uh, sorry now question number 
which of the following statements best expresses the essence of the passage yes i was talking about essence few moments back right so what is essence you have to pick uh, the points from all the paragraphs given in the passage and form your answer that is the essence it must comprise all the important points the major points of the passage so let us check the options uh, option a says human extinction is just around the corner with the speedy process of destruction of the environment no does it uh, comprise the essence no it doesn't now the next one what does it say human extinction is just around the corner with the uh, sorry it is already done uh, option b says doomsday prophecies have been done many times in the past it is the perfect time to look back at those prophecies and understand where we stand no it is too vague right doomsday prophecies has been done have been done it is already mentioned but it uh, it does not comprise the essence this is it is just a part part of the passage right and doomsday prophecies no no it cannot be the essence it does not comprise or both option a and b do not comprise the uh, essence of the passage because they do not consist of the of all the points right you can see all the points are not mentioned here neither in option a nor in option b so how can it be the essence now let us move to option c humans have caused severe damage to nature and hence facing consequences of their actions fine it is already mentioned in the passage clearly covid 19 and amazon fires are two big instances yes these are the two big instances already mentioned in the passage by the author now if humans check their actions try to nullify the damage already caused it can protect the future generations from facing the bitter consequences yes. see it is saying that if we human beings check our actions and try to nullify the already caused damage uh, fine we have already caused se severe damage several damages have been caused but if we try to check our actions fine uh, it can help protect our future generations from facing the dire consequences so yes this seems to be our answer because it comprises almost all the points right? it comprises almost all the points uh, from the passage so it can be the essence still let's check the other options option e is all already eliminated because uh, b and c it mentions b is not the answer so we need not look at option e now option d says human beings are finally getting what they deserve as we sow so shall we reap Human beings perhaps had forgotten the saying while committing their atrocities towards mother nature. No, it is uh, becoming too negative, full of negative thoughts. No, no, this is definitely, the author definitely does not want to convey this to the readers. And, and it also it does not comprise all the major points. So option C is the best answer choice. That is, it becomes the essence of the passage, given passage. Right. Now, the last question. What is the tone of the author throughout the passage? Yes, this is a very important question. And here at this juncture, I must advise you that if, see, here, are many, here there are many options, right? You may or may not know the meaning of all the options. And in case of tone based questions, it is better to avoid this type of questions. In mains, uh, what happens if you just make a guesswork and mark your answer, but it turns out to be um, absolutely wrong? That is, you have made the wrong guess. Fine, what happens? You get, uh, you do not get marks for this question, and also you get a negative mark. So getting negative and getting less marks is what you cannot afford during a mains exam, right? It can prevent you from um, getting selected, right? So better to avoid this type of questions. Yes, of course, if you know the meaning of the options, you can always go for the question, right? You can attend to it. Now let us check this one. What is the tone of the author throughout the passage? 
ऑप्शन ए डिस्परेजिंग सो वॉट डज डिस्परेजिंग मीन डिस्परेजिंग मीन्स एक्सप्रेशन थ्रू ओपिनियन आई मीन डिस्परेजिंग मीन्स एक्सप्रेसिंग योर ओपिनियन दैट समथिंग इज ऑफ लिटिल वर्थ फाइन एंड नेक्स्ट वन वॉट डज इट से क्रिटिकल ऑप्शन बी से क्रिटिकल सो वॉट इज क्रिटिकल क्रिटिकल मीन्स इवेल्युएटिंग समथिंग लाइक यू केयरफुल इवेल्युएट समथिंग देन जज द रॉन्ग डूइंग्स एंड पॉइंट आउट दैट इज यू आर बिकमिंग क्रिटिकल पॉइंट आउट वॉट रॉन्ग डूइंग्स यू हैव डन यू हैव कमिटेड फाइन दैट इज बींग क्रिटिकल सो अकॉर्डिंग टू मी द ऑथर इज बींग क्रिटिकल स्टिल लेट्स चेक द अदर ऑप्शन pessimistic you must be knowing the meaning of this one so what is pessimistic it means tending to see the worst aspect of things or believe that the worst will happen that is you are becoming uh, too pessimistic means that you are actually looking at the bad side of things the dark side of things right or the worst aspect of things and you believe that everything will be bad in the end so that is being pessimistic and option d optimistic it is just the opposite of pessimistic right optimistic means being hopeful and confident about the future that is you always look at the bright side of things the good aspects of life the good aspects of everything right that is being optimistic being hopeful and option e says choleric so uh, what does choleric mean it means bad tempered or irritable is the author being bad tempered is the author at any time being uh, irritable no so only option b is our correct answer choice because the author is actually being critical in the passage if you look closely if you read between the lines you will understand that the author is being critical in the given passage he carefully evaluates and judges the wrong doings of human beings right and also points out what can be done to save mother nature right so that's it Uh, and that's it for today uh, i'll try to bring and discuss another rc if possible right and i'll give a critical analysis of the complete rc along it uh, along with it i'll discuss the questions too fine so that's all folks that's all for today thank you